Hello there everyone. Isn't it a lovely evening? Good evening to you and welcome to the Saroy channel. I've got such a wonderful story for you this evening that you're really going to enjoy. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because there's so many lovely Bigfoot stories coming out and you don't want to miss any of them. So let's get started. Dear Sarah and all your listeners, my name is Helena and I live in the Appalachian Mountains in a large cabin with my two sisters and my parents. At the time of my Bigfoot encounter, in 1986, I was only 13 years of age, and my memory of this creature is as vivid today as it was yesterday. It all happened when my little Scottish terrier, Aubrey, went missing. This was my dog, and he meant the world to me. I wanted to go looking for him because I was sure he was lost and frightened. My father told me it was too late to search for the dog because it is dangerous and there are predators in the woods at night. He promised me that early dawn, as soon as the sun started to rise, we could go searching for my dog. I pretended to agree with him, but I had other ideas in my head. I was determined that come what may, I was going to search for Aubrey the moment everyone had gone to bed. It seemed ages before my father and mother retired as they had been talking for ages. Finally, they surrendered to their exhaustion and went to bed. I waited until the whole, the whole house became very still and quiet and the clock read 4 a.m. And then I changed from my slippers into a pair of sneakers and wrapped my warm dressing gown over my pink pajamas and armed with a flashlight, I ventured out, in, out of the cabin into the still night. It was a cool night, although it was early morning. There was a slight breeze and it was a full moon. It was a little less dark than usual. I had been warned so many times never to go out into the wild part of our property with the ubiquitous trees from oaks, pines, cedars and redwoods, wild sage and spruce without being accompanied by one of my parents. I had always been bloody minded by nature and determined as I was, I was not going to leave my dog stranded if I could possibly help it. I had visions of poor Aubrey trapped in the woods, and I just had to find him. The night seemed unusually quiet, as the crickets were not singing, and I did not hear the usual animal sounds that I was accustomed to. But as uneasy as it was, I still marched through the woods like a soldier on a valiant mission. Aubrey, I called, Aubrey, Aubrey. The woods were quiet. All I could hear was the sound of my sneakers crushing the leaf litter under my feet and the faint echoes of my calls coming back to me. I looked at the woods and suddenly realised that this was more daunting task than I had imagined. Aubrey could be anywhere and I did not have the faintest idea where to start looking. Somehow the woods became huge to me. I decided to take an area that was filled with more rambling shrubbery because Aubrey may have got trapped in some of the hedgerow or something. Aubrey, I called, Aubrey, and again I was met with silence. Suddenly I felt my whole body sinking into the ground and I felt a sudden cold wetness engulf my whole being. It was quicksand. I felt myself sinking and sliding deeper and deeper into this muddy mire. I struggled to get out of the mud, but the more I fought, the more this formidable opponent of nature dragged me down. I was sinking deeper into the mud and I knew it would not be long before my head was covered completely, and then my whole life would ultimately be over. Tears ran down my cheeks, and I could taste their saltiness on my tongue, and then I burst into the most uncontrollable sobs. I knew my life was coming to an end. This Appalachian quicksand had taken many lives over the years, and it would not be any different for me. Why should it be? There was no point in screaming because no one would hear me in the woods, and if anyone did, they would just think I was another animal. Over the years, we had heard weird sounds coming from the woods, and sometimes we even thought we heard the sound of a woman screaming. I had heard it many times myself, so I knew my screams would fall on deaf ears. All I could do was pray, and that is what I did. I was starting to feel very cold, and quicksand was now starting to slide right up my nose. I knew in seconds, I would not be able to breathe. Then it happened. The mud finally covered my nose and was sliding up the rest of my face. 
and was beginning to swallow me alive. This was what it was. I could not breathe and I just prayed that it would be over quickly. Suddenly I was dragged out of the quicksand so fast. Something that had extraordinary strength was pulling me out. It was hard to see what it was because my eyes were covered in mud and for a moment I was somewhat blinded. I felt myself being carried in strong arms that felt exceedingly muscular. I wiped the mud away from my eyes and blinked, and then I was able to open them. I looked up into the face of a monstrous hairy beast, and I screamed. I was convinced this thing was going to eat me. He was huge like a bear, only much, much bigger. I was being carried six feet off the ground, so this creature must have been eight foot tall at the very least. All I knew was that I was covered with lo all I knew was that he was covered with long brown hair from head to toe, and the only area that was hairless were parts of his face. The creature ignored me as I screamed. Put me down, put me down, I cried. Please, please put me down. I could see red eyes shine in the creature's eyes, and I was filled with fear. Was this the devil himself dragging me to hell? Perhaps I had died after all, and this was my final resting place, being dragged into the fiery furnace. I pinched myself and I realized I was still very much alive. I noticed that the creature was nearing the edge of the forest, and then I felt myself being sucked down this long tunnel or vortex. Now I was really beginning to believe that I had actually died. Suddenly we were hundreds of miles away from my home. I knew this because I recognized the lake and the familiar landmarks. How was this possible? In three minutes I was in a place that was about four hours drive from my home. I was so stunned by this revelation that for a moment I forgot my fear and stared at my surroundings in disbelief. The creature continued to carry me in his arms with such ease as if I was as light as a feather. Finally, I found myself being taken into the depths of a cave where there was a la large fire crackling on the dirt floor. The creature dumped me next to the fire and grunted. Oh, oh, oh. The next thing I knew was that I was surrounded by five creatures that looked at me in surprise. I do not think they were pleased to have me in their den as they eyed me with a mixture of suspicion and curiosity. I was glad of the warmth of the fire because my clothes were sopping wet. But I was afraid of these creatures. They were huge and I noticed the tallest one was easily ten foot. And I got the impression that he was the alpha male. When he grunted and then chattered, all the eyes were on him. And I knew that they were talking about me. I was clearly a problem for them. I turned to look the big creature in the eyes, and it was terrifying. Imagine for a moment going up to the tiger in a wild and looking at him straight in the eyes. How would you feel? You would ex probably expect to be eaten alive. Well, that's how I felt facing these formidable creatures. I spoke to the creature and said, please, will you take me home? And I pointed to the outside of the cave. The creatures all started to chatter excitedly, one to another and I had no idea what was going on. It was like that. Finally, the big alpha male grunted. And then he chattered. And all the creatures listened intently. And then one of the smaller females stepped forward and flung me over her shoulders. And before I knew it, I was feeling that rushing, pulling feeling of an invisible tunnel and then there I was, three minutes later, outside the forest, only yards away from my home. The creature put me down and I watched her closely. One minute she was there and the next she was gone, just like a ghost. She just vanished. When I returned home, it was early dawn and my father had not noticed that I had gone missing. He told me to get some clothes on because we were going to get Aubrey. It turned out that the neighbour had called because she had found my dog on her front porch. I was naturally thrilled to get my dog back, but I had so many unanswered questions going through my head 
Like who and what were those creatures? How could an animal make a fire that was... that was just a preposterous idea? But I'd seen it with my own eyes. How was it that we had ended up in the same kind of wor... How is it that I'd ended up in some kind of wormhole that had almost teleported us from one place to another? It would explain why the female creature vanished before my very eyes after she returned me home. How did she know where my home was? It was mysterious and extraordinary, and I didn't know what to think. All I know is that one creature saved my life. I do not know whether I was on the menu or not. Maybe I was brought back to their den to get dry after being pulled down the muddy mire. Who knows why my life was spared? But I knew the alpha male had ultimately made the final decision, and he had decided to set me free. After a lot of research, I discovered that the creature that saved me from the quicksand was a Bigfoot. I also found out that people sometimes see Bigfoot vanish before their very eyes. I have also heard that Bigfoot has been connected to the supernatural and slipping in and out of other dimensions. My experience was not interdimensional, but more like teleportation, and I distinctly remember the suction of that tunnel, so I do not know what to think. I do know this though, I think they are highly intelligent and some may be good and others may be bad. I know these creatures terrified me because of the way they look. They are terribly scary and I think some of them may have killed humans because they have the potential to be exceedingly dangerous. Yet they may also have a bit of humanity to them. If they did not, why did they let me go? I wish I could give you all the answers, but I cannot. All I can do is to tell you my story, which I hope will be of interest to you. Thank you, Helena, for a really, really fascinating story. It does sound like you were teleported from one place to another. Until next time, good night.